Hi folks, uh, more acrylics, I'm sorry for all you watercolourists who are waiting for me to do some watercolours. <coughs> all the time I'm uh, enjoying using with this uh, this vet gel, agri-vet gel, I'll carry on. Uh, but there, are, there are, you've got 1500 watercolours on YouTube to be getting on with and probably another 300 videos on Patreon that you haven't seen. Uh, this is a bit of Fabriano, 130 pounds weight. Uh, it makes no difference what it is really. It's primed on both sides to seal it, or more or less seal it. And I've added a bit of um, burnt sienna and some chalk dust, some, some powdered chalk. And what I want to do is, um, well, I, I, I'm on, I should have been on the byway this morning. So I could have photograph that I'm working working on that I took uh, oh three or four years ago now and I and I'm working I want to work from it work up a bit of an abstract -y. sort of the walk you know, we do the bike ride every Tuesday but we had a lot of rain yesterday I mean really had a lot of rain we had a month's rain in in a day well for us in London was was quite exceptional. <coughs> We have had heavier rain, but not for quite so prolonged. We have, of course, yeah. it happens now and again. And the River Wandle, there was a, which I worked from, I'm inspired by, uh, that, that had a flood warning. Um, a, a couple of pals have gone off and done the bike ride. But I want to do the wetlands from the boardwalk. There's so many lovely views that most people say, oh, yes, nice, it's so, it's lovely, all the trees and blah, blah, blah. But I'm looking for colour. Colour and, and and what would make a nice painting without any great focal points. So um, I'm going to uh, have a go at something. I've done it before, but, but, and I'm going to I'm going to use quite a bit of stipple. So um, we've got. I'll do, I'll do a bit of drawing on it first, just to give some guidelines. So we have some bits bushy trees all around here, bushy shrubby trees, a bit distance, and then we've got a sort of bit of land going across here with lots and lots of grasses and all sorts of things in there. And a tree, an old oak tree just coming up here. I'll just make it up as I go along. <laughs> but that's a general view, but behind here I want some blue-grey to give a bit of distance to it, because this is a painting, not a copy of a photograph. I know when you're, when you're a beginner, you rely on photographs or other people's work, which is fine. That's how I learned. Books and videos and so on, but there comes a time when you have to do these things for yourself. and you'll soon get bored with looking for reference material. It's a big problem. But once you've got your own, uh, a number of photographs of your own work online, like on your laptop or your computer, you can, uh, or your phone, you can work from them. You can, you've got an infinite source of, of uh, abstraction. When I say abstraction, I don't mean a mindless uh, daubing with your eyes shut. I mean taking a view and putting in into it and enhancing what you like. You're making a painting, you're not making a photograph. Photographs have their place, but so does art and uh, the fine art. Now, I, I do like uh, abstract expressionism, as you know. So, I, I've, I've been shopping today. I, uh, I went to the range, and somebody's given me an alternative to the range, but it's quite a long way away from me in South London and, it, and by train I was, wouldn't even dream about going by car into London, oh no way. Uh, we, uh, I, I, it would take probably about two hours from door to door to get there on, the, on public transport, on the trains. Um, so if I did mail order there would be a cost in postage. So what I do, I can buy the same stuff at uh, the range. I, I bought a new tube, I bought some cadmium yellow pale hue to this. It's Windsor & Newson, quite a good good paint. Graduate, Dale Rowney. 
Here's my palette. This this is uh, cadmium yellow medium, uh, deep medium, or oh, I think it's deep medium light, the new one. Uh, cadmium red, no, vermilion, vermilion. Oh, I should have got a tube of that. Alizarin, ultramarine, black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and the and the burnt sienna, unfortunately, in the in the uh, Galleria range, is similar to the Wilco's. Uh, but so yeah, I was hoping it was going to be a bit of a darker red, but when I look at it, take the lid off, it's uh, it's the same hue. So it's the watercolour and oil burnt sienna, which is much darker, a much darker saturated red, which I love, absolutely love. So I suppose I could make it by adding red to the bird's humber. Uh, this is the brush I bought this morning, two pound something, £2.25, it was very cheap, it's a proper bristle brush, it's a uh, Dada Rowney Bright, which I think is a very nice brush and I've got uh, a couple of longer flats, well that one's about the same. I do prefer Brights or Chisel End. Okay so, now what I really want to show you is this, uh, this stuff, this uh, Agri Agri Vet gel that Sid put me onto. I've been using it for, uh, well, I've done uh, f three paintings and a small tester painting with it. It goes on a little tiny bit blue on your white paper, but then it sort of vanishes. But it doesn't matter because it it's, it won't show up on that on that uh, ground colour, will it? But it's absolutely superb. It stays open quite a while, which is which is why I've got it. It dilutes or flows, makes the paint flow very easily. So I love it, basically, in short. So let's put in a, now I'll put in a, a sky, so we've got a bit of, bit of white, a bit of blue, a bit of it is, that is. And we'll just start dobbing it with that. Look, look how lovely that is. Just a mid sky tone here. Going down to much lighter, use a bit of ochre, a bit of white and a bit of a bit of this and a bit of that. Let's get that all over there. Yeah, I don't start by trying to make one thing good. Start by painting all over the... It took me a long time to, to realise the value of that. Bit of advice, but it's true. Just work at here. Don't try to make a portrait to start with. That will come at the end. This is where we, we, we adjust. Put some colour on, kill the canvas. Plenty of white, plenty of ochre, a bit of red. I can put a bit of blue sky in if I want, but I, I like my gentler skies without blue. I'll make, well, that's quite a good, good blue. Very light, but let's uh, go over it. Or just, it doesn't matter, you're going to change it. Whatever you do, you're going to change. In any case, I'm not really good enough to be able to do it. a finished portrait in my one go. Use me, uh, me gel. Bit of a lecture that was, wasn't it? Sure. I put all these uh, paintings after I've uploaded the demo or downloaded the demo to YouTube or well, uploaded it to YouTube yeah uploaded to YouTube um, I put on my Facebook art page for a record I also keep a record in my in a folder with, but you can see over oh must be over 1500 pictures on my Facebook page in the timeline that you can watch one after the other. Um, one of the artists I do love to look at is Jackie Gardner. She's a Scottish lass and she paints sort of abstract impressionism which is what I like. It, it does have some link to what what inspired it like a boat or a 
clump of trees or something, but it's sort of abstracted in a most wonderful way. Jackie Gardner, J, I think it's J A C K I E. On Facebook, she's a lovely person, very helpful. If you need any any advice, she will, she will give it. She's very generous. But then so am I. Well, I've done enough of this sky, I'll uh, go back, let it dry a bit. Oh, I'm saying let it dry, this is acrylic. This would normally dry in seconds, even with the PVA glue that I use a lot of. You can mix PVA glue with this uh, vet gel. It's, it's blue, I think, to distinguish it from the uh, more refined human animal type. Stuff. It's slight, it helps the ultrasounds slide over your tummy, that sort of thing. And then it takes ages to wipe off because there's so much of it. Right, okay. <coughs> I'm going to go into the foreground now, so I'm going to get this, this brush. I'm just going to put an approximate foreground in, approximate colours. I'm going to use black in this. That code light is more like a uh, Lemon yellow, so I want a uh, quite a bit of red in it because it will it will enhance the uh, enhance the uh, greens, the lighter greens when I put them in. dark in there. Now we're going to get in some nice good shadow areas at the base of the tree. Into red. Red and blue, that's all. What is he doing? Uh, the tree's up there so let's get that in. Let's get a little space in for it anyway. I'm just putting the background around in big so that if you want something to light, so put it next to something darker. So that's why I'm putting a, a lovely dark shadow in here so that I can I can drag over and stipple over. Put something to to counter change with. Now let's have a bit of a bit of blue, a bit of black, a bit of white. So that will give us a bit of um, background, a bit of cool, cool background. A bit more blue, I think. Something nicer than that, I think. No, not light enough. A bit more blue, bluey, lighty, grey. I can drag this sky over that, over all of it actually. Right, okay, get back into the foreground. Red, black. Black is a great colour. Not so good in watercolour, but so I've only really used loads of black in these watercolours. Water's colours heat, heat mix uh, with burnt sienna, and you get the granulation, meaning the, the pigments will settle out on the paper, and it will look lovely. Lovely technique, actually. You can exploit it, but like all things, you can overdo it. I don't I know? All right, get that guy. Let's get a bit of warmer brown in that burnt sienna in there. I'm painting sort of complementary colours to the ones that are going on on top. Now you wouldn't think that's going to end up light, but it, it saves putting. Well, 
putting it all in at the end. It's better to, to get it done. Paint. Because you want you want shadows in, in your your lights. It's the lights that make the darks or the darks that enhance the lights. Uh, right, okay. Let's get that done there. So I want to put in some some grasses going up there. High high grasses. Right, put that in there. Right, that's uh, now. The sky is just about touched dry now. Now a, a bit of the, the wetness has got into the paper, so I'll just put it flat. But I'll put it clips in the corners so that it doesn't the the bit that doesn't get painted doesn't show when I put the mount on it. <coughs> Looking at the range, they've got a, a, a vast array of uh, of photograph type frames which you can use for, you can cut your own mounts or buy mounts for them. I will cut my own. Um, that you can you can use the, the, the six or seven pounds for a decent size and you can uh, adapt, uh, you can use them for your watercolours or your acrylics or your oils. The ones on paper anyway. I'll stick them to a bit of backing board or if they're fat enough, don't bother. I'm just keeping, I don't want to keep my brushes in soak because it will bend the bristles. So I'll just give them a bit of a scrub. I mean, eventually they will wear out, perhaps. but then they, when they wear, they become other tools. Okay, so let's do a bit more of that sky. Uh, I'll get in my light crimsony uh, I'm going to, I'm going to have to, whoo dear, I'm going to have to buy some more membranes. These are, this is a master, Masters and Palette, it's the one I keep my watercolours in, on a towel, this, this membrane is on a towel, to keep the, water, the uh, acrylics nice and workable. Right, now I want to get some, oh, I'll need a bit of on my lap. So a nice, nice uh, light background now. Bit of yellow ochre in there. So let me just take it over the uh, underneath. It's lost and found all the time. Work, work from soft edges. Oh, it's bouncing a bit there. Oh, if I can reach it, I've, I'm forever changing my position with this box here. So I've got it on its legs at the moment. But unfortunately, for some reason, the design of the box means that when you pull the back, the single leg out from underneath the box, it doesn't make, it doesn't end up the same height with the legs legs retracted in the front two legs, which is a pity. I've got to, I've got to put it on a brick to do that, which is a bit of a pain, especially in the, when the brick moves, or the uh, easel moves on it. So let's just get rid of the hairs. Oh, that's not a hair, that's, a, that's my, my drawing. So I want that light because I'm going to put it quite dark against it. And the season that I, that I based my painting on was, I think, autumn. I can't remember if it was either autumn or spring. But it doesn't really matter, it can be whatever I want it to be. Right, get back and do that, get them with that uh, blue, grey, 
to the cloud going across the sky. Whatever. Don't paint, or well, try not to paint the same shape of the cloud to match the same shape of the bushes underneath. Have your clouds going behind bushes or trees so it looks as if it's, you haven't fitted them in. I'm just mixing a little bit of bit of red in with with the uh, sienna, no, the ochre and the uh, ochre and the red. Does that make sense? I forget what I'm going to say. I forget everything. You see. See, bit by bit, we're, build, we're build, building up a sky. And the skies I've been doing lately, I've been very pleased with. They, they've, um, there's a lot going on in them. They're probably a bit unrealistic, but they're, they're my skies. I did them. I didn't copy them. I made them up. And it's usually just a bit of luck. Let's get a nice dark bit of yellow there. And you, I, I, what I'm going to try to work out, if I remember, is a bit of impasto to f just to f give a final sort of flourish over the sky. There's an awful lot I want to do with that. But if, let's get back into that. So, alizarin, blue, and plenty of white, a bit of medium. You know, it's just very, very subtle, look. But don't make it all, all uh, the same colour. Put a bit of variety in it. Right, now we're getting a bit of impasto. Bit of white, bit of... No medium in this, just a bit of ochre, white and the red, a red. I'll just... Not sure if that works. But you can always go back over it and just put your... Quarter to twelve already and I haven't even... Cut the grass. Lucky my wife's gone out. Right now, I want a bit more light on that horizon now. The hairs are coming out of this brush. And we'll, then we'll uh, do a bit of foreground to start the start the, the detail. I'm trying to do, pretending to do a bit of detail. So there's quite a bit of movement in that sky, oh, just because of the brush is agitated, so the sky looks agitated. Just put a little bit of that back here because I've just overdid it. Okay, if I, if, if, if I can improve that I, I will. So I'm going to start to put in some foreground now. The trees are going to come down to about there, going up slightly. So, uh, I think it was a time in spring when the bulrushes had gone to the, the flower heads. So there was sort of white fluff. It was, it was like um, eider down all over the, sprinkled all over the ground. So we'll uh, 
Looks like we do something like that. Well, the uh, ochre colour, but very light. And a bit of, bit of medium. So we'll. It's this sort of thing. Whoops. I was getting cramp in my fingers yesterday doing all this. Then I'll put shadow and greens and stuff in. Alright, okay, shadow blue, red, uh, red or uh, alizarin. Bit, bit of black in there, I think. Just a bit too blue. Uh, stipple. Got a hair there. Just goes to show how, how much paint that hair stopped me putting the over the these sort of strokes in. We we'll got a bit darker with that. Now, fire that mauve is a complementary to yellow. So we'll have grasses over that. See that the background is still showing through that dark, right, the dark I put on. Bring that up there. Right. I know it's a mixed technique. We, we, what's that? We've got uh, Painted sky, but I stippled everything else. But it doesn't matter but as long as we get the effect that we want. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of that tree. I'll do the background first. So, a bit of that colour, a bit more blue, and a bit of, bit of white. And we'll we'll uh, put all this in here. If you'd have a job to paint that, it would take ages, wouldn't it? Give you all my secrets. I'll cover that drawing up a little bit. I don't know what brush I'm going to put used for the tree. I want some misty effects in the back, so I'm just using a bit of the sky mix that's on the palette just to Blend it a little bit. Okay. There'll be shadow and all sorts of stuff in there as well. So let's get in some dark greens now. Well, dark green. And then I can still put light green over it. Just a few rogue leaves up here. Get some dark in there. A bit of red, I like a bit of red in with my greens. We want the darks in here. Now I want dark here because I, there's a bush there that was very very light and it went up quite high. It was like a tree, but it, it was like oh, I it could have even been a silver birch. I can't remember, but it had lots of yellow leaves. And that, in autumn, or even in autumn anyway, in my period autumn. Um, it would have been, been the colours of those uh, silver birch leaves. Let's just put a bit of the dark in, in here. And we'll 
put in some coming up here. Right, now that'll give a nice background for, I know it's a bit in the middle, but uh, but I'm going to balance it with a big with the big oak tree. Now let's get in some some yellowy greens now in, in this here. But I need to be brighter than that. Can it always add a bit of white to your yellow? I've got a bit of red to that. Just to warm it up a little bit with autumn. -y. We treat it as an autumn. Right, there we are. Now, uh, the light on the easel is catching there from the window on the right. But I can't do much about that really other than oh lemon yellow now. The light it seems to be is coming from the from the left. So we'll just put in these I will put some some detail on this tree. Oh, I'll get more green. Clean the bar. I'll carry on with that brush. I bought this brush probably twenty years ago. 25 years ago, uh, I bought several of them and they, they really do lend themselves to this lovely stipple. Put that in there, that makes it pretty. Might put a few rigger bits in there. Uh, right, let's, let's bring this tree over here a little bit. Now the dark, darker green. Now there's some dark in there just a counter change. Okay. We'll go back into this foreground now and we'll uh, start adding some, some colours. I've got to put my whites back and the, the, my candy frost back, my Ida. Just it's all random. They were after an effects, not a photograph. Uh, and the criteria is if it looks alright, then it is alright. I'll get some darker greens in there, I think. With the black, the yellow, red. Foreground. I might put a bit of, bit of dragging on there. This is just reeds, grasses, bulrushes, marsh grass. 
It is a very wet area and heaven knows what it's like today with my mates are over there. Could even be flooded with the amount of rain we had in uh, the Wandle Valley. Just blend it all in, we'll put the whites back. Make sure you, when you put your water, in the, the brush, brush in the water, that the, it doesn't, well, it will get you in the ferrule. There's a gap between the end of the wooden handle and the bristles where they're stuck in. That fills with water if you're not careful. So give it a good shake and good dry. Otherwise, you'll be doing that and all of a sudden the water will fall out. I've been caught out like that. I've got to put more dark shadow in there. So I'll do that on one. Blue and the, and the red. And a bit of black. Then my lights will show up much more. And I'm trying to avoid pretty patterns. A bit of ochre in there. And all sorts of colours. That will dry very quickly and I can tamp it with the edge of the brushes. You can, with the brush you can see how many uh, bits of grasses that will paint by having paint on the single bristles. Oh, I'll just give that another wipe and then I'll put the light colours in and we'll work on the tree. I'll put that bit of oak tree here. Now I'm going. I'll, I'll probably have to use a uh, a flat, a flat, a, a, a squirrel brush. I've got that one. That that will probably do it. Uh, no, I'll change my mind. Right. Okay. Let's get the lights in now. So we've got. Uh, Load of uh, sort of ochre lights, not pure white, we don't want pure white. We, we want uh, this is where you can overdo things. Bit of a avenue through there. Well, if there probably isn't, I can't remember, but there is now. Some lovely yellow irises are in the wetlands at the moment. Oh, I've got some oakery ones here, warmer. Catching the light. Now you can see why I put that dark in to start with because we're getting that counter change now, I hope. So 
So we've got the shadow in, and we'll just put, put in the uh, some of those heads. I don't think there would be any flowers out, and that's what it might be. But what there aren't are poppies. Right. Extremely light in the bits of this. We go back into that distance. Right, okay. Well, let's work on that big tree now. So, uh, so light on one side, it's just, just a load of greys, really. So I can use, uh, I can use a black in the grey. Right, okay, that's a uh, A bit of jelly in that. Thick of the tree off. It's quite heavy. I mean, it's an oak tree. That dark on that side. Now, I suppose a few bits of uh, rigor work with. Bring that tree, the base of that tree down a bit. Put it in here. Well, I've overdone that shadow. tree again. Right, there we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've lost my nice river. No, I haven't got something around here in the mess. Ah, oh, there it is. Now it's quite a difficult going over a rough surface with uh, with a rigger. You need quite a bit of water, so mix up the dark. So we'll have a bit of a bit of amber. 
bit of bit of this, bit of that. Oh, couldn't do that in your oil paint. Keep it rough. Don't don't try to get too corny, as we say in the UK. We're going to put a few leaves on this. Lost and lost and found, ragged. Right, well, let's do a bit on this uh, tree here. Just to highlight the meat on that. Now, if that's a silver birch, these are quite spindly. I don't want to overdo it. Right, now we're going to stipple on some uh, some uh, last year's leaves. So we have some bits of all sorts here. So it's all in keeping with the uh, with the techniques of this, apart from the sky. See, so there's just loads of stipple, there's a bit of ochre stipple. Okay. Oh. We'll uh, put in some uh, just a few bits here and there. Well, I'm going to put that in the mouth, I don't know much more I can do, I just fiddle it to death. Uh, so I'll just get a bit of tape ready to hold, so I'm going to have to move the painting further up and adjust the uh, camera for you. And I think you'll ag agree that the, uh, the gel is a super bite. Put the white one on, it's a bit, bit tatty now. Oh, yeah, that's not big enough. Well, I've got a double mount here, but it's really for 16 by 12, and the paper here is 15 by 11. Well, I don't know. Oh, I think 
think I'm going to sign that. It's worth the signature. In my opinion. Uh, right, okay, I'm just going to zoom out. Let's just get that out there and just move the other room more. Uh, nearly there. Right, okay. So there we have it. That's a, sort of a lilac-y blue mount with a, with a white insert. <coughs> I cut these myself, but, but, but they're not ch cheap. But uh, the range sell full imperial size balls for about three pounds, which is very good. So I quite like that. I hope you do. Thanks for for looking. I probably could do just a little bit there where I made a bit of a muff. So I cleaned the brush and I'm just going with some some light. I'm going to scrap this. this uh, Membrane now, it's just getting it. I'll put another one on. Good enough. Christ, quarter past twelve. Well, how time flies when you're enjoying yourself. Just lose a bit of that. Okay, I'm not going to do any more to it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll get that up loaded now and then you can leave your comments. Don't forget that <coughs> I've got a Patreon channel. And a lot of paintings for sale on Etsy, on the Etsy shop. All the links are, are on the videos. I hope you don't mind the plug. Thanks for, for looking in. Bye bye. Oh, before I go, the painting I did yesterday, the uh, Chichester salt marshes, or a bit of this Chichester salt marsh, with a large clump of uh, heavily laden leafed trees on the right going off into the distance. Well, it, it was from a particular, I took a photograph, or photographs of it um, several years ago and I worked from it and somebody, must live there, sent me a Google map reference to it, Google Earth, and there it was. Almost, well the trees are there, of course they're not as I paint them, but the view itself, it was just that memory. How uh, about that? I was so, I was really, really pleased about that. Anyway, enough from me. Bye bye.